So starting with the historical perspectives, we can situate ourselves in maybe some hundreds of thousands of years of history. Maybe even longer, I can, I can tell you. In one manner, it might be longer. It turns out that part of the reason that we can see so well, which, which we can, human beings can really see well, way better than almost any other animal, except hunting birds. Hunting birds can see better than us, but other than that, man, it's us. And that's especially rare among mammals, and particularly rare among primates. So you might ask yourself, well, why can we see so well? Well, it turns out that part of the reason is that we co-evolved with predatory snakes. So predatory snakes are newer than lizards, by the way, even though you wouldn't think so. And there's a woman at UCLA named Lynn Isbell who was thinking, why do people see so well? And so she, went, she had this snake detection theory because she'd worked with primates. She knew they could really see the sort of camouflage patterns that snake ha snakes have and the motion that they make. They're really good at detecting that. Plus, human beings are very afraid of snakes, innately. Plus, if you take chimpanzees who've never seen a snake, and you throw a rubber snake in their cage, assuming they're in a cage, then they jump to the top of the cage and, because they're not happy about that snake, but then they look at it. And then if they're out in the jungle, jungling around, and they see a big snake, then they have a specific sort of cry they make. And they'll stand there for like nine hours watching a big snake making this noise. And all the other chimps, depending on how afraid they are, also come and look at the snake. And so, yeah, because they want to know what that snake's up to. And that's what we want to know, too. We want to know what the snakes are up to, that's for sure. And the circuit that we developed to detect snakes, the visual circuit, is partly what gives us such tremendous acuity of vision. And partly the way Isbell figured that out was by correlating primate visual acuity with the pre and its development over evolutionary time with the prevalence of predatory snakes in that geographical region. And she found that there was a very high correlation. So we can see sharply, partly because we're always looking for snakes. And you know that pile of <coughs> undone homework in your, in, your, in your room? That's snakes, as far as the part of your brain that developed to deal with snakes is concerned. And so, you know, if you leave a lot of things undone around you, then all you've got is snakes. And you're their target. And so the, that's no way to live. And so that whale down there at the bottom of the ocean, that's kind of a variant of a snake. It's a dragon, even though it's a whale. It breathes fire, right? So let's call it a dragon because that's what it is. And the idea that you have to rescue something from the dragon is an unbelievably old story. And so that's partly what we're going to be doing at the beginning of this course. We're going to be going way back into the murk and muck of prehistory, trying to understand what the hell we've been up to for the last 60 million years. Because that's when our tree-dwelling ancestors first really started to deal with predatory snakes. And my suspicions are that you're all evolved from one of those little tree-dwelling rats. The first one who figured out that if you dropped a snake, a stick on a snake, it would probably run away. So, that's what we've been doing for 60 million years. Throwing sticks at snakes. So, that's the first lecture. And you'll see why, when you do the reading, why this is broadly relevant, because it also accounts, at least in part, for the human tendency to demonize people who aren't like us, because it turns out that we use the same circuit that we would use to handle predatory reptiles, let's say. We use that circuit to first process people who are strange to us. And it makes sense, because people who are strange to us, who come from different cultures and who represent different ideals, are unbelievably dangerous, even though they might also be unbelievably beneficial. You know, the poor Native Americans, they came out and they shook hands with the Europeans, and then 95% of them died in the next 150 years. Right? They all died of plagues. They died of smallpox. They died of measles. Measles just wiped them out. By the time the pilgrims came to North America, which is, you know, fairly early in North American European history, 95% of the Indians were already dead. They were welcoming the Europeans because they didn't have any people to get their crops off. So, Meeting someone who's strange is no trivial thing, and even if they don't poison you with some horrible illness, they'll come along with some cockamamie idea, like Marxism, and you'll be Chinese, and then it'll be the 20th century, and a hundred million of you will die. It's very useful to understand the deep 
mythological structures that we live inside and their relationship to our brain and our body. It really gives you insight into how people function. It's helpful. 